Hey guys, Tom Bramwell here with my personal pick for our Games of 2013 series. As you can see, uh, it is Animal Crossing New Leaf from Nintendo. Now, a little word about the footage you're seeing here before I get going. Um, in, in the absence of any convenient, anyway, method of capturing from our 3DS, um, what I did was I pointed a high-resolution camera at the screen, balanced the thing on the desk, and sort of controlled it with my fingertips. So um, I appreciate the footage isn't the nicest in the world, but I was very keen to show you my actual town, um, which uh, I spent some uh, some months uh, running around in this summer, um, rather than give you a generic version. So uh, I hope you'll appreciate the effort I went to, um, and not just complain about the scan lines and whatever. Um, happy Christmas, by the way. Uh, you look great. Uh, and so does Animal Crossing New Leaf. This is a game, as I say, that um, I played a lot this summer. I played it every single day when it came out, which is really quite something when you consider it. Um, my daily routine would generally involve getting up, uh, waking up actually, and before I even got out of bed, loading up my 3DS, um, running around my town a little as I'm doing here, uh, looking for fossils which would be hidden under unsettled lumps of earth, uh, rock clusters that I could smash open and there'd be... Uh, or inside, and um, also the elusive money rock. Um, there are loads of little rocks all around your town, and every day, one of them, selected at random, uh, deposits money when you whack it with your spade. And if you um, uh, create a sort of buffer for yourself behind where you're standing, like a couple of holes that you dig, so that it kind of, uh, so when you hit the, 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 the rock with a spade, it pushes you back towards them, it sort of holds you in place, and you can keep hitting it for uh, up to eight little increasingly uh, valuable pots of cash. So I would do that. I would uh, I would whack trees because there was often stuff in in, in the trees. I once found a, a, a discarded sofa in a, in a tree, which is really quite impressive when you think about it. Um, and obviously there are lots of bees as well, but you can get antidote from the store. But yeah, as you can tell, I'm rambling because I just got into this rhythm of little pleasurable delights. Um, there's so many little things that happen in the world of Animal Crossing. Really, it's a game where you move into a town. You're the mayor of the town for some reason, um, and you. Um, you just uh, you just try to have a nice time. Like you have uh, all these little animals who live there with you. So they come and go, um, depending on whether you're nice to them, whether they're happy. You know, and, and everyone's extremely capricious and fallible. So um, they'll just as likely leave because um, uh, some perceived slight, uh, and then change their mind completely when you say they sh when you suggest they should stay um, as anything else. Um, I really like the, the setup that it has. I mean, previous Animal Crossing games, as, as in this one, um, I should say, uh, you start off with a small house and a guy um, uh, gives it to you and you owe him loads and loads of money. His name's Tom Nook. Uh, and so, to some extent, the game is about paying him off so you can continue upgrading your house. But really, that's just a kind of uh, a little hook to get you going. Um, once you're in the world, you, you can't help but... Um, spend your money on things like uh, furniture for your house, little bits of carpet, and you gain a lot of stuff from, from people like, this is Teddy, um, like, uh, that, that, that live in your town. It's a different group of animals for every town, um, and they have customised greetings that change over time, um, depending on their whim as much as yours. Um, there's a postman, there's, uh, uh, there's an owl who runs a museum, I think you might, you might see a bit of him at the end of this video. Um, and uh, all these little, in a weird way, it's all these little simple systems um, that, that, that are sort of, uh, you know, the fact that you can change the town tune, the fact that you can do weeding and plant stuff or whatever, but they disguise these amazingly chaotic depths. Um, you know, you can, you can go fishing, you can, you can hunt for bugs and stuff. Um, but, you know, who are all these people who keep, like, who's this guy who pops in occasionally to sell you art? And some of it's real and some of it's forgeries. And what are the point, what is the point of buying the art? Do you just put it on display in your house? What else can you do with it? Um, you know, why do these things happen? When? Etc. Um, and, you know, there are tons of things that even people who've played it for an extremely long time, I've played it for something like 80 or 90 hours, um, probably haven't unlocked. I know there's a coffee shop um, that I haven't got. Um, and I sort of have an idea of why that is, but um, it doesn't bother me because I've been so um, distracted enjoying all the other charms of the game. Um, it just puts you in that kind of mood, you know. Uh, you, you, you don't really care so much about understanding the specific nature of the systems of unravelling the mystery, because the mystery is part of the fun. The serendipity, the sort of the sense of... Um, uh, of the unpredictable is, is what really keeps you going like you'll you'll get up in the morning and you have your list of chores that you're going to do but you need to allow yourself another 10 or 15 minutes just for the little distractions that you encounter um that you know that you'll, you'll suddenly see a fin amongst the uh, the fish that you're fishing for down on the shore and you'll think i've never seen a, a fin protruding above the water before um and you'll try to catch it but you, you'll fail initially and then you'll come back and you'll see another one and 
eventually realize, oh, it's sharks, and there's all sorts of different types of sharks. And, and the same sort of thing goes for the bugs. And then you realize that things change with the seasons. I mean, as you can see here, it's winter in my town. Um, when I started playing, it was, you know, it was, it was summer. The clothing you wear affects, um, affects uh, your ability to, uh, to get around, and sometimes you look very uh, sort of hot and sweaty, and you're sliding around all over the place, and sometimes you're, uh, you're, you're, you're freezing. Um, it's got some great, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a game that you can play with other people directly. There's, uh, I think, you know, a couple of new things for, actually, I don't know which of them were new, but um, things that are in Animal Crossing New Leaf that use the internet. There's the, uh, the Dream Suite where you can sort of see, uh, you, you sort of, you, you can encounter other people's towns. And there's the Happy Homes Showcase where you can actually sort of go around and, and, and visit other people's houses and see the way that they've laid things out. And sometimes you can buy bits of furniture and stuff, certain items. Um, but those those things, whilst they're cool, I, th I always think of them as kind of added bonuses. For me, the real charm of of Animal Crossing's multiplayer isn't even necessarily directly being in the same town together. It's the the, the shared sense of experience. Um, when I was playing the game, I was playing it at the same time as my wife, as a bunch of our friends, and you know there was a, there was a day when we all went up to a museum in London. We all sat on the train, all four of us, in one of those little four things on the carriage, and we were all playing Animal Crossing. And we weren't even necessarily going into each other's towns. We were just shouting out what we were up to. Oh wow, do you need that bit of furniture from the um, Mad Scientist set? Yes, I do. Oh okay, I'll come into your town and swap it for something, etc. And so on. Um, and 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 just the sense of. Uh, of shared experience. I also had one of my favourite memories of, of this year. Um, it's a silly little thing. Uh, my, my wife and I, we actually got married in April, um, but uh, a little after that when we were playing Animal Crossing, we would be sitting there on the couch uh, together doing fishing for hours, and at some point she came into my town uh, and, and we went down to uh, the beach and to the jetty there and took, took a boat out to the tropical island where you can sh uh, fish and hunt for uh, bugs, uh, uh, you know, sort of more, more um, variations, and um, do activities. But the thing that really, I don't know, that, that, that was really memorable was um, just the two of us sat in the in the front of the boat, um, whilst Cap'n, who, who owns the boat, would sing little, silly little sea shanties. Um, and it was just such a lovely, sweet um, moment, and, it, and, and, it, and it's really stuck with me in a funny way. Um, it really is, as a game, it's just so friendly and, and magical, and wonderful. Um, it has a real sense of, of magic and wonder um, at a time when I think games generally are, are sort of abandoning those things in favour of you know, production values and spectacle and structure and downloadable content. It's funny actually, this is a game where it's many many delights that would, would never be obscured by things like microtransactions, like touch wood. Um, they're always things that are given up over time. Like, you know, this is, I'm taking a tour around my museum here. This is where uh, you can see all the things I've collected through fishing um, this particular exhibit. I think I'm, yeah, in the, in the, in the, uh, the middle room there's all the different uh, tropical fish and sharks and things like that. And, you know, this is, I, I, in a weird way I just like coming here and kind of looking at all this stuff that I've collected over time displayed in a, a sort of silly, ridiculous way. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a great sense of um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's a game which you sort of personalise just by being yourself, um, rather than by trying to be artistic or by, you know, going on online and um, using QR codes and stuff to scan things and designs. Although you can actually do that, um, you know, and I like that. I like the sense that uh, of having a strong personal connection with the game. Anyway, it's almost about time to wrap up. I reckon uh, this is this is me running around my museum still. You can see I've got lots of dinosaurs. Uh, who's this guy? Seems very charming. Um, Animal Crossing New Leaf is one of is probably close to being my game of the year. Um, I would say that if you're gonna if you haven't played it if you feel like playing it, um, make sure you're playing it at the same time as your friends or family because sharing that experience is so much better. And if you can't get that in place for this version, then just just plan around uh, whenever they do the next one. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have a lovely Christmas and uh, enjoy the rest of our Games of 2013 series.